In this video, I take a motorcycle ride through northern Thailand to the border of Myanmar and Laos. I'm out here, like on the edge of nowhere. I visit the private temple of a crazy artist. He believes that by building this temple, he will achieve immortality. Learn how to make heroin at the Opium Museum. He's been hitting the pipe pretty hard. And check out the nightlife in Chiang Rai. Apparently, it's a place you can get a beer and a hand job for about 20 bucks. Yeah. I'm about five minutes outside of Chiang Mai, about three hours away from Chiang Rai, and I stopped before I hit the main road here just to reset myself, pop in my earplugs, and get ready for this ride. I'm here at my favorite Thai food restaurant for a little coffee break before I hit the road. The drive so far has been exciting and sometimes a little uh, terrifying. Thai people are not great drivers. They are very dangerous on the road. And sometimes on these long, fast stretches of road where people are stuck behind a slow truck, they'll just jump out into the ongoing traffic at like 100 kilometers an hour. And so you'll, you'll have these cars coming at you directly at you in your lane of traffic at 100 kilometers an hour. It is terrifying and you really, really, really have to pay attention. I am in Chiang Rai province, a little more than halfway to Wang Chiang Rai, the city, and I've stopped off at this shrine to King Nereswan the Great. There's a very romanticized story about the history and the bravery of King Nereswan. Legend has it that he was in war with a Burmese king. And in the middle of a big battle, Nereswan found the Burmese king hiding under the shade of a tree on his elephant. And Nereswan pulled up on his elephant and said to the Burmese king, why are you hiding underneath the tree? Don't be a pussy. Come out and fight me to the death in an elephant duel. It'll be really cool. No matter which one of us dies, we'll go down in history as these really brave kings who were some of the last who were willing to fight to the death in an elephant duel. And apparently, Nereswan almost lost. He was grazed in the helmet by the other guy's sword before he was able to cut the other guy down, kill him, and win the fight. That is some OG shit right there. You don't see too many elephant duels to the death these days. Some set of balls on that guy. I booked this hotel room off of Agoda for $16 a night, the Piman Inn. The hotel is a little Funky, but uh, functional. Funky and functional. I love this little detail. Repurposed seats from an AMF bowling alley. The place does have a pretty great pool and a fitness center. They are unusually modern compared to the condition the rest of the hotel's in. For 16 bucks a night to have the pool, the fitness center, a good night's sleep, air conditioning, and breakfast, I'll take that deal all day long. After I got to Chiang Rai yesterday, I was cashed out. After three and a half or four hours on that motorcycle, 
it doesn't seem like you're expending a lot of effort, a lot of energy, but you're vibrating. Your whole body is vibrating for hours at a time. So uh, when I got here last night, I had all these plans to go to the night markets and check out the city, but no way, that was it, I was done. This morning I have about a one hour ride to the Golden Triangle where Thailand meets Myanmar and Laos. I'm going to see the Golden Triangle Buddha and the Opium Museum. So uh, we've got some narcotics history in store for us today, stay tuned. <laughs> Right now, I'm about halfway between Chiang Rai and the Golden Triangle. I pulled off the main highway to stop at a 7-Eleven in this little village. Kind of has a jungle plantation vibe to it. Not much out here. The great thing about the roads out here is that they are long and straight and flat and wide and smooth. And so I've been driving this Honda CB500X as if it were a sport bike. But at 6,000 RPMs and 120 kilometers per hour, it just doesn't sound really happy about what I'm pushing it to do. But it's fun. I'm out here, like on the edge of nowhere, and it gets really rural out here. This is farm country for sure. Much different than the ride from Chiang Mai to Chiang Rai, which had some nice big open roads and some nice curves through the mountains, but a lot of that ride was slow traffic going through little towns. The burning season is in full effect here in the very far north of Thailand, near the border with Myanmar. This behind me, that is not fog, not a marine layer, that is burning season smoke. Those are just carcinogens in the air. It's like the smoking lounge at the Ho Chi Minh Airport. I'm gonna get back on the road and get over to the Narcotics Museum. Oh, what fun. So here I am at the Golden Triangle, the intersection of Northern Thailand with Laos and Myanmar. The area got its name from the US Department of Justice because at the time, the heroin, the opium this region was producing was worth its weight in gold from the US Department of Justice abstract. The Golden Triangle region of Southeast Asia has become the center of a thriving opium economy and a crucial source of narcotics for the world. The Golden Triangle includes parts of Burma, China, Laos, and Thailand. It provides ideal conditions for opium cultivation, which began during the 16th and 17th centuries, and the demand for heroin by the United States troops during the Vietnam War helped transform the opium economy of the Golden Triangle into a large and profitable heroin economy. Drug trafficking now influences every aspect of politics in the region. I've never been a heroin user. I've never tried heroin. But if I were a heroin user, I'd probably want to buy it somewhere around here. It's a cool little village, but there's not much to do up here other than the sightseeing that you've seen me do and the motorcycle ride. I mean, that's the big thing. I've been a lot of riders in Chiang Mai who uh, just came into the bar weary from the road who told me they had just taken the ride from the triangle. So something I, had, I, something I had to do and I'm glad that I did it. Another thing that strikes me about this area is that all these tourist shops, they look very clean and neat and well stocked and not very busy. My suspicion is that some of the drug money still funneling through this neighborhood is sort of propping things up here to give the appearance that the region has transitioned from drug money to tourism. But uh, no, I have a feeling that that is not the case. Well, I suppose the other thing you can come up here for is to try to score a shitload of drugs. 
see how that works out. I've not done any homework about this place, so I'm just gonna kind of freewheel it and see what is on offer here. Big gift shop. Not entirely sure what these are doing in the Opium Museum, but if you want a wooden cock for a salt and pepper shaker, they've got you covered. You have the opium pipes and tobacco pipes, no crack pipes. I get to choose a card, kind of a postcard, along with my 50 baht entry fee. I like the Happy Opium Production Clan here. Look at that, and it's a postcard. Whoa, okay. Actually, uh, quite a cool museum. The way that it's designed. From the outside, you would think it was just some like rinkety shop in the back of that storefront, but uh, no, it's actually a design space with a giant avatar-like opium tree, opium plant. There are like tales of folklore about the dangers of opium and the history of opium in Thailand. And this one from a hill tribe legend, the birth of opium. It's about a beautiful young woman who was loved by men from all over. And she couldn't choose one in fear of pissing the rest of them off. So she decided to make love to them all. The sacrifice led to her death, and before she hit the grave, she promised she would give birth to the most beautiful flower. But she warned, be careful, for this flower would bear both good and evil. They've got an instruction manual here in case your apartment is high enough in the building and the sunlight hits your windowsill and you want to try growing opium at home. Number one, plant the seeds. Number two, there's your growth phase. Here is the flowering stage, number three. Once the last petal falls off the opium, your pod is fully mature. Now it is time to start production. When the capsules mature, incisions are made and white latex seeps from the scored areas. Overnight, the liquid thickens and darkens into a narcotic. And no matter how old your scale is, Still 28 grams in an ounce. Just be warned, don't end up like my friend Pookie here. Looks like he's been uh, hitting the pipe pretty hard. So once again, I was totally wiped out from that ride today. I spent about four and a half hours in total making that trip up to the Golden Triangle from Chiang Rai and back, and about three hours on the motorcycle. So when I got back to the hotel, I slept soundly for about an hour, and I still don't want to move my body too much. Thankfully, this is Thailand, so there is a street food stand and a 7-Eleven every 100 feet in this country. I walked outside of the hotel to see what I could find, and it took me all of about four minutes to find this awesome pla pao for 100 baht, or about $3. I got this giant fish with the rice noodles, lettuce wraps, and hot sauce. Oh yeah, you gotta love Thailand's version of takeout food. The internet at my hotel was super slow and the power at the hotel kept cutting out and I was trying to upload a YouTube video. Typical digital nomad problem. Luckily I found, it looks like one of the only co-working spaces open here in Chiang Rai. It's simply called the Creative and Co-working Space. It's part of a 24-hour laundromat. It's got a ramen noodle shop, a real digital nomad haven here. Their internet speeds were blazing fast, like 400 megabytes per second download speeds. So I was able to pop over here and get my Samoang Loop ride video uploaded. And now I'm on my way to the Chiang Rai Saturday night walking street market. I will see you over there. Okay. 
So this is the Saturday night walking street market in Chiang Rai. And like everything in Chiang Rai so far, it's like a smaller town version of Chiang Mai. That's generally my impression of this place, that it's a very small town, but it is quite charming. And it's a lot more pleasurable to walk around this night market like I'm doing now than it is to walk around some of the night markets in Chiang Mai where it's like assholes and elbows and, you know, a million tourists. Not too many white tourists here. That's also a plus. That also adds to the charm of this place. That is the famed Chiang Rai clock tower, which is right nearby the Saturday night walking street market. And I ended up walking almost all the way through that market. It was so large that I didn't make it from one end to the other. But I did see some very strange local dancing at a concert in the park there. Um, like a lot of these night markets, you can walk from one end to the other, but it ends up being more of the same. Right now I'm walking down Jettyed Road. I think I'm saying that properly. Anyway, for all of you young men out there watching, it is the street with all the girl bars on it, supposedly. It looks a little desolate. It's not exactly jumping like Bangkok, but uh, apparently it's a place you can get a beer and a hand job for about 20 bucks. So I figured I would give you the nickel tour. Oh, here we go. Hello. Hello, Thailand. Hello, Thailand. <laughs> you say hello to YouTube. This is where all the girl bars are, or what? Oh. Yeah. Wow. What's the name of your bar here? Wow. High Five Bar. High Five Bar, yes. High Five. High Five, yes. <laughs> all right, gentlemen, we're at the oh. High Five Bar on Jettyed Road, and she's very fascinated with the camera. A very tiny camera. Wow, huh? good. Yeah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> I'll come back and see you. I'm going to take a tour. So this is the Jettyed Road girl bar scene here in Chiang Rai, kind of a uh, sleepier, I'd say maybe seedier version of what you can expect in Chiang Mai. And uh, the typical population of big drunk British expats. I don't mix too well with that sort. Number one, they uh, have some kind of issue with my like Joe Hollywood vibe. And number two, I know they're speaking English, but half of the time, I don't know what the fuck they're saying. So it doesn't end well. I mean, it's like hit or miss. I get into a lot of fights. Uh, I may uh, call it quits on the videos and come back out here tonight. So if I end up tomorrow with a black eye or an arrest warrant, <laughs> you'll have a pretty good idea why. I'm walking into the White Temple here in Chiang Rai and the ticket, the entry fee was 100 baht or about three bucks. And uh, Quite a place. I think this cardboard cutout is the proprietor of the temple. It is privately owned. So the story behind this place goes that the temple fell into disrepair and a local artist from Chiang Rai took it upon himself to buy it and spruce it up a bit. And he believes that by building this temple and offering it to Buddha, he will achieve immortality. So all you tech billionaire weirdos from Silicon Valley that are messing around with life extension, uh-uh, this guy's going for the long game. But don't think you're gonna buy your way into his uh, business here because he only accepts donations up to 10,000 baht or about 300 bucks. 
because he doesn't want big money influencing the deal he's got going on here with Buddha. I mean, this is uh, it's quite a place. Apparently he intends to continue building out the temple and surrounding buildings for the next 50 years until 2070. I suppose that's when his immortality kicks in and he can just kind of kick back and relax for the rest of his never ending life. That doesn't sound fun. So that's gonna do it for my weekend here in Chiang Rai and the Golden Triangle. It was a fairly inexpensive weekend of innocent fun. I spent 4,000 baht on the bike and gas for three days and 30 bucks on the hotel. So a total of about $150 for the whole weekend. Much, much less than someone could have spent on illicit drugs and bar girls. I hope you enjoyed watching the video. Please like and subscribe and all that business. But more importantly, comment and let me know what you'd like to see and hear more of. And I will see you in the next video. This ride back to Chiang Mai is taking much longer than I would like it to.